Blood Bowl by Matt Forbeck. Edited for audio and dramatized by Luke Mason. Part 1. Hi there, sports fans, and welcome to Blood Bowl for tonight's contest. You join us here with a capacity crowd packed with members of every race from across the known world, all howling like banshees in anticipation for tonight's game. Oh, and yes, there are some banshees here as well. Kick off in a few moments' time, so we've just got some time to go over to your commentator for tonight, Jim Johnson, for a recap on the rules of the game before battle commences. Good evening, Jim. Thank you, Bob. Well, good evening, and boy, are you folks in for some great sporting entertainment. First of all, though, for those of you at home who are unfamiliar with the rules, here's how the game is played. Blood Bowl is an epic conflict between two teams of heavily armed and quite insane warriors. Players pass, throw, and run with the ball, attempting to get it to the other end of the field. The end zone. Of course, the other team must try and stop them and recover the ball for their side. If a team gets the ball over the line into the opponent's end zone, it's called a touchdown! The team that scores the most touchdowns by the end of the match wins the game. Of course, it's not always quite as simple as that. Hi, my name is Dunk Hoffman, and welcome to the shit show that's my life. It wasn't always, mind you. In my youth in Altdorf, I'd led the kind of sheltered life that only wealth and privilege could provide. As the eldest heir to the massive Hoffman fortune, I'd lived far above the squalor of the ghettos of my hometown. Back then, I'd been mostly and happily ignorant of the kind of existence the vast bulk of the population scratched out in the shadows of my family's towering keep. That's when the shit went south big time. No one ever made a fortune without making a few enemies. My father, Lugner, used to always say. Of course, he was just asking for it, really. So, now that my family has completely fallen from grace, I am now here, clambering up the side of this forsaken pile of rubble called Mount Schmier, bent on doing something to redeem my name, and by some extension on what which I am really not sure about, is that of my family. Here in the Grey Mountains, right on the edge of the Empire, I am about to do something utterly foolish and possibly downright bonkers. I am going to slay a damn dragon! For what better way to become a hero? But before we get to that, where I probably die and get eaten, let's do a little recap. Fear not, good people of Dorchen. By tonight, you will no longer shiver in the shadows of the foul beast that has terrorized your hamlet for so long. Here's a bottle of the finest brandy. No, don't worry about paying for it now. You can pay it for me when you return. And that was that. I got stone drunk, partying with the strangers in this tavern, in the middle of nowhere, who then sent me on my way that very night, whilst I had drunk a ton of liquid courage. With only third, my faithful horse, and a splitting headache, to go in the home of a terrible fire-breathing dragon. Mm. Now what would something heroic to shout a challenge at the dragon? Mm. On second thoughts... Perhaps I should poke around a bit first? Third, there's a good boy, you stay here. Now, let's take a closer look in this cave. Oh shit, I forgot my torch. Oh well, best not go back. Let's just put this sword away for the moment. Oh, I still have the brandy bottle. Empty, but it'll do. Right, to let me see. Ah, this scarf will do the trick. Come on to think of it, this red scarf I've worn every day since that young, beautiful woman, Helgretta Bircher, had given it to me nearly a year ago. At the time, it was the most treasured gift from my betrothed, as my most valued possession. Now that arranged marriage had gone to pot, and just a bittersweet memory. And all this scarf is now is a reminder of how far I'd fallen. It's only fitting, then, that it helped light the path to my redemption. Where's my tinder box? Ah, that's better. Now, best draw my sword. Well, this place is creepy. I wonder if dragons have treasure hoards like in the stories you always hear. Did it sleep on golden gems? But there doesn't seem to be any. Do you think those stories were made up? Hang on. 
Where the heck is this beast? The cave isn't that big. Uh, well, at least we know this is its lair. Nah, in the corner a skeleton. Poor thing. Probably killed by dragon fire or something. It's just bones now. Oh look, more remains. Let's see. A few goblins, a bear picked clean, a couple of skeletons dressed in some heroic looking knightly armour. Is that a dwarf or a halfling? <gasps> oh, I hope to God it's not a child. Oh, it's several and all. You don't think these skeletons are going to rise up into some kind of undead horde? <sighs> don't be silly. Imagining things in the damn dark cave. Well, let's carry on. Oh, no. That's it. This is where the cave ends. Not a dragon or a gold coin in sight. Just my rotten luck. Only I could find the lair of a missing dragon. Well, that buggered it. Another chance to earn fortune and glory. Gone. Huh? Hang on. What is that? Hissing noise. Oh, a snake. Well, that's not surprising in a cave like this. A, a goat? Here, a goat? Has the dragon been out hunting and brought back some poor beast for its evening meal? Well, perhaps it's not a princess, but I could try and save this poor, harmless little goat. Oh, shit. Hang on a minute. Is that a lion's head? And a goat's head? And a snake's head? What the hell was in that brandy? Um, I'm, 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 I'm terribly sorry. I, I was looking for a dragon, not a chimera. Here come from Dorchin. Mm. You're early. You, you were expecting me. Our last sacrifice was not so long ago. It's a bonus. <laughs> Our reputation grows. <laughs> yes, it draws us fresh victims. Fresh meat. Ah, that's why the villagers were so eager to point out the location of this dragon's lair. Old Gastwort had even drawn a map. They meant me to be a uh, sacrifice. I'm afraid there's been a mistake. I wasn't sent up here to be your next meal. Explain that. The kind and dedicated people of Dorchen fear that you might be tiring of your standard fare. They sent me up here to take your order for your upcoming meal. Would you prefer a virgin of some sort, or perhaps a nice little goblin? I'm told we might even be able to procure a few snotlings, or perhaps a little nobbler to chew on. Of course, of course, you can stick with your standards. I really do recommend the snotling, though. It's much tastier than the human. Possibly. But you're here now. Oh, shit. Ah, take that! That's good. At least it bleeds. Yes, we bleed. But how can you cut off if you have nothing to cut with? Um. <laughs> Don't worry. You will soon be joining our collection of bones. I may have lost my sword, but you can eat fire instead. Keep low. Move through your flow. The low man has control. Excellent. The fire has blinded that damn camera. And it was turning away towards the cave's entrance. Now is my chance to shoulder barge this damn monster out of the way. Leg it! Third, we gotta get out of here. To the village. Never let it be said that I didn't flee with the best of them. Ah, good. The damn village. Right! Open up! Open up now! Go away! We're closed for the night! You'll open up for me, damn you! After what I've been through, I earned the right to a warm bed tonight! You? You're supposed to be dead! And you're supposed to be a bloody innkeeper! Let me in and give me a bed! I'm hurt! My shoulders are ruined! How do I know you're not a ghost? Come back for revenge in our fair town! No one else has ever returned from the creature's grave alive! <laughs> Could a ghost do that? Now, son, I ask you, is that any way to make a reasonable request of your host? 
Morphs, I see breath. What are you? Shut that door. I'd hurry yourself in here quickly, son. Before that walrus makes his way down those stairs, he'll double bar the door for sure. I'm glad someone around here understands hospitality. Hi, I'm Dunk. Nice to meet you. I'm Slow Gold Fullbelly. Slick, you stinking bastard! Slick to my friends. You've got no friends here, you sort of con artist! He did me a good turn when you refused. I don't open the door for anyone I don't know after dark. Not when I've sent everyone else home. I met you earlier today. And sailed off the certain death, just like all the others. Sure, that providence and your own sheer arrogance would let you rule the day to kill by the gods. Grace and mercy, did you actually kill the beast? I made it back alive, but not unscathed. Oh, that's some mighty nasty looking hole you have in your armour there, son. It's nothing. It hurts like the blazes. Allow me. You can't do that here. I can't have wounded strangers stumbling into my place in the middle of the night. I think, kind sir, that you'd better make friends with this man quickly, if you don't wish to find yourself thrown out of your own establishment. All right. Let's be quick about it. Now, sit down, son, and I'll have a little look at that trouble of yours. Right. Let's get this armor off. It's not as bad as it looks. I've seen far worse. Are you a physician? Hardly, son. I am a Blood Bowl player's agent. For which team? I work for my player. Negotiate his contracts, defend his honour, get him as much time on the pitch as I can. For all the most P. Some agents handle a handful of different players all at once, but I prefer to concentrate on one star player at a time. That kind of dedication to personal service makes all the difference. Who's your player? I've had a lot of them over the years. Who is it now? Here you are. Half a bucket of water and some rags. Let's just say I'm between clients at the moment. Blood Bowl is a dangerous game. I've never seen a match. Really? If I'd lived in a big city, I'd go for matches every week. I've never much seen the point of it. A bunch of grown people, or dwarves, or elves, or orcs, or ogres, or worse, chasing a football around a field. Why bother? Because it pays better than feathery. Besides, people who go off looking to pick fights with dragons shouldn't speak ill of the career choices of others. We'll take that into consideration. You're a lucky man. The poison of a stinger like that can be fatal. I just wish I was dead. Let's get this boy a bed, Gastward. Aye, right away. Wake up! Wake up, hero! If you want to make a name for yourself now, now's the time. No time for modesty. Your chaos damned doom followed you here, and if you don't go out to meet it, it'll tear the whole town apart trying to find you. The Chimera is here. Got it in one, and it wants your head. How do you know that? Hero, bring us his head. Well, thanks for everything. I think it's uh, time to go. Your hand put this in motion. You placed your bet, and now it's time to pay up. You can't send him out there. The beast will rip him apart. This bastard you've befriended went out last night and enraged that carnivorous creature. If we don't give it what it wants, it'll kill us all. Oh, he's got a point, son. Sorry about this, but uh, you'd better go. What? I'm not going out there to face that thing. You and your friends sent me off to die. You can all bloody rot. Come on no, son. There's no reason for us all to die, right? There's no way for you to get away from that beast, so you might as well face up to it like a man. Think of the children. What bloody children? It's a town, right? There have to be children here. Yeah, loads of children. Normally you can't walk around here without tripping over them. They're orphans too, the whole lot of them. A pitiful bunch to be sure. Lying Bastards. Fine. I'll go. 
Wish me luck then, you cowards. A man like you has no need of luck, son. Just go out there and face your fate. Ten crowns says the beast eats him for breakfast. You, sir, have yourself a bet. Can you at least loan me a blade? Every barman has one. Wait a second. Uh, Here you are. This short sword is little more than a kitchen knife. Well, I suppose it beats bare hands. Third, not even the least bit scared, are you, lovely? I still remember that night. A fire had broken out in the family stables. Your friends were all trapped and had panicked and run deeper into the flames. They all died, but no, not you, third. You had stood your ground until the guards rescued. The next day, I asked my father for you to be mine, and I haven't regretted it a day since. Well, looks like we've got some work here to do, old buddy. Right, let's cut you free. Hey, this blade is so blunt it can't even cut through leather reins. Fine, I'll have to untie you. Oh, fine, third, you stay here. You'll need this, son. Get back in there. That thing could snap you up without stopping to chew. Oh, you're welcome. I hope you're better with a spear than you are expressing your gratitude. A spear? Well, that's a damn sight better than this blunt butcher's knife. This is all your fault. Oh, sod off, priest. That right there. That's who the beast wants. Dead or alive. Let's give him to it. Right. That shut him up. Who's next? Weezer. Oh, kill that stranger. Oh. Looks like the beast's gonna kill you first, Priestio. Oh, help me. Oh, someone save me. I am a man of the cloth. Ah, shit. Fine. Looks like I got one shot at this. This spear is quite well balanced. A little bit of luck and this thing will fly straight and true. Right, let's just aim. No, don't do it, son. A priest is dead anyway. Save yourself. Right, here we go. Sigma guide my aim. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Straight through that blasted snake's head. Bonus, it's pinned by the spear to the ground. Praise the gods! They've saved us all! Thanks be to them in their wondrous wisdom! How's that? I saved you! (laughs) That creature would never have bothered us at all if it wasn't for your interference! You told me it was a dragon. A weak and old dragon. You sent me to my death! Your arrogance sent you on your path. You think you would have done any better against a dragon? I just saved your entire town from a menace that has plagued it for generations. The least you owe me is your thanks. Really? We should thank you for destroying the balance of power in this region? That creature you just maimed is the most powerful in the area. While we lived in its shadow, it kept us from such threats. As brigands, carrion, orcs, even real dragons and wyverns. Now, here we are, exposed to the world around us, and every horrible thing in it. You've just destroyed this town! What the heck is this man talking about? This man is barking mad. I've slain the goddamn beast, haven't I? Where's my glory? Where's my fortune? The only thing in that bloody creature's cave had been a mound of bones. Well, I suppose that a Chimeria had little use for diamonds and gold. Where had it all gone wrong? That's gratitude for you, son. But it gets worse. How? The townspeople are poking their heads out of their homes, looking at the half-dead but still howling Chimera, and then pointing their fingers at you. I don't think that they're saying nice things about you, son. Now let's not stick around to find out. 